All right, so we've been, uh, been my dog broke my elbow. Um, so we haven't been doing much body work, but we're gonna about to get back on that today. Um, so I have been doing the steering rack, steering column on the Z, which has been a bit of a pain because the factory service manual doesn't actually tell you all these pieces sometimes, or there are things missing in it, things that can be replaced that they want, don't want you to replace. So we're gonna go through all that. Um, we'll just start with, you can see I've got it all laid out here. Steering rack stuff here. So this is the actual rack and pinion. Got the intermediate shaft here. So that's what connects the steering column to the actual rack and pinion. And then I've got my steering column here. A lot of this pretty easy to disassemble because you're dealing with some 1970s technology and that's when they still made stuff repairable by any person. Um, but everything got a fresh coat of paint. I've got some new pieces here, bolts, hardware, uh, OEM stuff that's hard to find these days. Where are you going to? Uh, I use Z Car Depot um, usually. They're out of Springfield, Missouri. Great place to get some no longer available parts that they still have in their stock, things like that. Um, set up a zinc plating kit so I could zinc plate things, get them nice and shiny, nice and protected, like, keep them from corroding. We've got Silglide, we've got Molygraph lube for lubricating everything. We've got copper anti-seize here. Nothing on this thing is gonna rust or ever corrode. Perfect, go. All right, so essentially, we'll start with the actual steering column here. The intermediate shaft, pretty simple. Um, your splines might be pretty rusty, your bolts might be pretty rusty. Um, You've got U-joints here. These are technically non-replaceable. They are staked in. If you look closely at yours or if you can get in there, you can see those little dimples, the four dimples. Those basically hold this in place. And this is a 15 millimeter by 38 millimeter U-joint. Pretty much impossible to find. Staking tools are incredibly expensive. So if yours are bad, there are options for it. It just requires some machining. Mine are pretty good. So I decided not to go in with it. They're pretty smooth. Um, I mean, there, there are some areas in the motion where it's a little sticky for a second, but I didn't have any issues with the steering feel um, when I was doing it, and my rack was completely caked up with dry grease, so that was probably the reason the steering was so tough to begin with. Now, I went through, painted this up, gave it a nice coat of paint, easy stuff. Same with, this is what goes into the actual steering column through the firewall here. So this sits in here, just about like that. <laughs> Connects into this shaft. This is a spring-loaded collapsible steering column. So it is technically a safety feature. So a lot of this stuff is not really designed to be rebuilt. And there'll be some stuff you have to take off. So you get it out. You've got your combination switches and ignition switches up there with the steering lock, so you gotta make sure you align everything right. It will come in one piece out of your car. You'll have an isolator mount that sits up here. This is what holds it, yep. So this slides over this. That's what holds it under the dash. You also got some bolts that go through the firewall there. And it actually comes out in two pieces. So I did not know that at first. So it took me a long time to be like, how do I get this apart? How do I get things out? Um, you slide this off with just a little bit of force and there's three bolts holding it or three screws. Take those out, whole thing comes apart. Makes it a lot easier to work on. You've got a bearing press fit up here. It's a C-clip style roller bearing. Interesting. One in the bottom there as well. Do you take those out? So you can. Um, they are really difficult, obviously, because of how they're placed, how they're pressed in. Um, I've seen some people who have popped these out. Once you pop them out, you got to make sure you don't lose the 30 ball bearings in there, or else okay. you are screwed. Um, no, these are these are little ball bearings, ball bearings right. held in with a C-clip. So if you pop that out, the C-clip comes with it. Jeez. 30 ball bearings go rolling across your floor and they're like the size of a grain of rice. So 
Um, I would suggest unless yours are really bad, don't even mess with them. Get brake clean, uh, spray it out really good, and then get yourself a syringe with your grease, pack it in there really nice. Um, I was able to reach both with the syringe and get them packed pretty well. We've got here, we've got the C-clips and thrust washer that hold this in there. Again, it is spring loaded, so when you do go to reinstall this or when you take these C-clips off to remove it, you want some pressure pushing up on it or else you're going to really struggle to get that out. But yes, we will install this. We will show a video of us installing it. Um, I went ahead and replaced, so at the top of it, you've also got your column nut. Somebody just grabbed one that happened to have the right thread at some point, previous owner stuff. I got a factory OEM replacement. Um, same with the steering collet here. Again, this is something you want to be careful with because it is just a little thin strip of metal holding these together spring-like. Wow. It's so like you can, again, get these at Z Car Depot. They still have some in stock. I replaced them. Mine don't look bad, but I'm just going to replace them. Uh, same with the uh, lock washer that goes with that nut there. So in between that, coupler, new hardware bolts for the coupler. This is a coupler I replaced when I got the car anyway, so I'm just going to reuse it. It's in pretty good condition. It's a polyurethane. Um, you can still get stock rubber ones. They're pretty easy to find if you really want a nice stock uh, feel to it no shake in the steering. I want a little bit more steering response. This thing's gonna be a little more performance oriented. And that brings us to the steering rack. Woo. All right, so after fighting with the horrible conditions we try to rattle can in around here, uh, finally got a nice smooth finish. Factory, you know, like where it had the steel part of the tube is black. A uh, nice flat aluminum on the old aluminum parts. Um, got everything taken out of here, cleaned up. Here's your actual rack that goes through the rack tube. Brushed it down, cleaned it off. All the pieces out of here, we'll go over assembly of that, where they go, um, how to reinstall all those. There are some pieces, though, that you will look at the factory service manual, and you will not be able to find. And that is... This, I grabbed one just in case I needed it. Uh, technically, you would need two. This does require some machining, but this is the housing end uh, bushing. It is steel lined with brass. So you can see in there, if you get close in there. So steel lined brass. Uh, it's got some grooves for oil, grease to move through it. Um, this is the only thing that your tube, your rack should be touching in the tube. It shouldn't be touching any of the inner walls. So if you've got play, when you put it in there, you need to replace these. Again, Z Car Depot still has some. I bought one just in case. Didn't really need them. And when I test fit through here, it would need machining anyway. Um, didn't seem worth it to me. So I'll stick with what I've got for right now. So is that the same on both sides? Yes. Yeah, so there'll be one over here. Okay. There'll be one over here. The one on this side, though, again, requires more machining. It is shorter. Okay. So they just give you a one size fits all thing that you then have to cut down two size for this side, but it should be the right side, or the right size when you're on this side. Okay. So this will be driver side, passenger side. Um, you've got two little bolts here. These are for greasing, so you put a zerk fitting on one, open the other, pump grease through it. Um, I went ahead and zinc plated those as well, got them ready to go. Um, I, for the most part, I might get a zerk fitting to try and put on there to grease this thing up once I get everything in, but I'm gonna load this thing up with grease beforehand anyway. And we are going to install those things pretty soon here. So, uh, pinion bearing, uh, again, Z Car Depot sells them, replaces the old pinion bearing. Good thing to replace while you're in there because the originals were not sealed. So if you ever got any water into yours, it can sit in these, corrode them, cause issues. Uh, my actual housing, pretty good. Seal, which covers everything. Again, you can still find them. They are available. Um, and then we've got all this stuff. Now, another piece that 
I could not find anywhere in the factory service manual were these little collars. Uh, there's no mention of them. They were on my car. I don't even know if they were factory or if there's something somebody else put on. But it's rubber uh, with like basically some pot metal around it. But threads over here covers the Zerk fittings that you can put in the rack while you have the boots off to actually uh, grease where the ball and joints go in. So yeah, we'll get to that in a second. In the meantime, I have greased a few things. Um, rack, as you can see, is actually inside the rack housing, greased up with some of this molly graph. We've got the pinion in here. Uh, if you get inside there, get a look inside there. I got the bearing press fit onto the pinion itself. You're gonna push it down onto the actual worm gear shoulders as tight as it can go. And then you'll work it in there. So right now you can see so also one thing I probably forgot to mention earlier, um, these are 28 spline shafts. So you've got 13 and a half degrees of turn between each spline you're going to intersect, which there are three of. Uh, so if you misalign things, it can make aligning your steering wheel. So it's actually centered pretty hard. So just try and keep track of where all the splines sat. So I've been doing that by where the actual bolt goes through here to tie the splines together. Um, I've got it lined up exactly how it was when I put it, took everything out. Did the same with the intermediate shafts, which I've got on the box over there right now. Uh, I did not do it for the steering column, so that one's gonna be a little bit of a guess and try type thing, but we'll, we'll get it figured out. We're going to get all these other parts for the rack here, greased up and put in Again, this is one of those things, keep track of how it goes together. There's only like 15 pieces in this thing. Pretty easy to keep track of. You shouldn't mess it up if you do it right or you know what you're doing on cars. So we're going to get everything installed on the rack. Then we'll get over to the column and start that. All right, back to the steering rack. We're going to, uh, you saw me assemble everything, get the pinion in, the actual rack inside the rack tube, did the tension bolt in here, and that does need actual adjustment and like testing with a torque wrench to get that figured out. So, I just kind of followed a general spec which said like tighten down back off 25 degrees that seemed way too tight so I backed it off like a whole 180 after that and it seems to still want to turn just by hand and isn't rubbing all the grease off the contact part so as you can see I can turn this by hand it's a little tight when I actually throw the steering column on to the splines here, give it a turn, nice and smooth. There's a little area where the oil or the grease does seem to be getting wiped off, which isn't great. So I might back it off just a little bit more. But anyway, that little bit of wiping shouldn't be bad. Um, I do, I have not filled the rack using the fill points yet. So once it's actually filled, that might keep that area greased. So, so I got these little collars on the ends. Those cover where you can put a Zerk fitting in to grease the uh, inner tie rod, spring and uh, ball joint seat. However, if you are replacing your inner tie rods, you're probably not getting OEM parts, which require these. If you get the aftermarket parts, they are internally sealed and greased. So these will actually not be important anymore. So keep that in mind. Um, if you are using OEM, original old sock stuff, or 
some new old stock stuff. Um, <laughs> that is what it'll look like. The new parts look very different, but you did need uh, this stuff and you need it all nice and greased. So I'm still gonna pack some grease in there, but it is not necessary. You can put these collars over the Zerk fittings, uh, place to cover it. And then we've got the lock nut for the actual inner tie rods. Just gonna get those threaded on so they're ready to go when I get the tie rods in. Make sure the threads are nice and greased, so no rusting, but these will have boots, so there shouldn't be any water getting in anyway. This is the lock for the tension uh, bolt here. So that will go on to lock it so your tension doesn't change uh, given certain situations. So I'm going to wipe this off, get a lot of this grease off, and then I'll put that on. All right, so that lock nut's on. I have not tightened it down yet, but that is essentially ready to go. That looks about, you know, that's just eyeballing it, but about where it was set before. Uh, my steering was a little tough, but that's probably because the rack was all, you know, shot to shit. So I'm still going to install these. Like I said, even though they're not important, not going to be used anymore with aftermarket inner tie rods. It's just going to be the end of the rod here. You can see that hole, you just put the spring in first and then put this little uh, tappet over it and uh, the grease, when you grease it, it should hold it in. Um, however, if you don't put the tie rods in right away, don't whip this thing around or else they might fly out. Coming back here one more time. All right, so like I said, there is a tension for this. If you have the tools for it, there's uh, the pinion uh, tension which is this here, your pinion gear, as well as rack preload to test. So pinion tension is supposed to be 17 uh, inch pounds to turn this. The rack preload is supposed to be between 30 to 37 pounds. So that's basically you take a fishing uh, weight. So like hang, weight hanger uh, measure and you put that on the end and pull it and it should take between 30 to 37 pounds to basically pull the rack uh, and turn the pinion gear without any force being applied to the pinion gear. So those are the two actual measurements in their specs. Probably something good to do. I might try to find those tools and actually measure it, but right now I'm liking how it turns the way I have it set. All right, one more thing for the steering rack. Still haven't done it yet because I got to grease this thing really well. I'm going to put a little more grease around the C-clips and everything. Uh, where the pinion shaft goes in. This is the grease slash oil seal. Um, you're just gonna wanna press that in. It is pretty much like a kind of hard rubber. Um, grease it up good, press it in, goes over, seals everything up. Uh, that's just easily done with pretty much any sort of uh, pressing tool that you can press a bearing in with. So keep that in mind. Don't forget to do this if you have a 240Z rack, if you have a late 260Z or 280Z, you're gonna have bolts in a gasket that cover the pinion seal. Those parts are a lot easier to make or rebuild yourself. You're gonna have to buy this if you have a 240Z. I would definitely suggest it. Again, Z Car Depot carries these. Now we're onto the steering column. I got all the pieces here ready to go. We got the shaft that goes through. This is where <clears throat> the steering wheel splines go in. Castle nut and lock washer go on here. And the collar goes on here. And then this little thrust washer and C-clip are gonna go on there. However, this is spring-loaded. So to put it in, you basically need someone jamming a tube all the way up the ass end of this thing, forcing down on it while someone else puts the C-clip in. Otherwise, it will not work. So this is a two-man job here, unless you have like some ratchet strap pulley situation you can whip up in your garage. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Should we do it right here? Yeah, we'll just do it on the ground. Okay. All right. All right, now we gotta get stuff lined up. All right, there we go. 
Now let's get a close up. So you want to line up the hole here because this is the steering wheel lock. Actually, I believe that's the right side for the steering wheel lock. I can't remember. That looks like the steering wheel lock. I think it is. Does that look like the steering wheel lock? I don't know. <laughs> Probably is. I think that's the steering wheel lock. <laughs> All right. And then I'll, yeah, until you can get it on. That looks like it. Yeah, that looks like the right. All right, so that's the steering wheel lock. That's cool. the steering wheel lock. So thrust washer and then C-clip. So, yeah. It's all the way down, I'll tell you that. All right, let off. There we go. Well, that wasn't that bad. It still spins, so look, you can. Yeah, so I can still adjust it. We've got upper steering column, lower steering column, and you've got the orientation I told you for the bushing. So again, you want to line this up. Um, this sits in the firewall like this. So the steering column points upwards towards you. You're going to get the upper steering column. You want the steering wheel lock on, assuming you're gonna run one. Uh, I'm sure it wouldn't matter too much if you decided to delete it, but you're going to want that facing on your right side if your left hand drives. So I'm gonna slide those together, make sure you orient them. So the way this looks, looks good right now. I've got it so when this presses against the firewall here, you've got your uh, gasket on it. Steering column points up towards you. This is currently my left side where the steering lock is. So we're gonna get those little screws in there. But anyway, I'm just gonna get one in for right now. Uh, just so everything's oriented. Boom, that's ready to go. I did not find any sort of spec on how tight you want these. I'm assuming basically just hand tight. Um, even if there was a torque spec, probably wouldn't be worth doing because this isn't a BMW. So nice and hand tight. Actually, we'll just go ahead and do all, all of them. And again, all I did was basically just run a rag soaked in grease of the grease I'm using, this Molly Graph, through the inside, uh, really greased up the shaft before I put it in the upper steering column part. And that's going to make sure that everything's nice and lubricated up there. <clears throat> Same as the steering rack. Um, the shafts will basically never be touching anything on the actual inside of these housings. You will just be running along the bearings. So as long as your bearings are nice and greased, um, everything else has a little bit of a coating of grease. You should never have to worry about any corrosion inside there. Next step would be the bushing. Uh, well, I guess technically it's not a bushing. It's more of like an isolator slash mount. So anyway, I just did a little uh, silicone lubricant on it. Uh, mine have kind of hardened a little bit. These were originally kind of a softer rubber. Mine have gotten a little hard. Basically, probably everyone's has. They do not make replacements for these. You cannot find these. So you're just gonna kind of have to deal with what you have unless you have someone who can make rubber for you. No one seems to complain about the fact that these have gotten hard over time. Mine's got a little cracking in it. It's fine. The part that sticks out further than the actual isolator is what you want going towards the firewall for everything to line up. So we're gonna go ahead and try and slide this on here. Should go pretty well. It's getting a little tough. So I'll probably do this separately. But anyway, you might need to do a little rotating, turning, uh, get someone to help you or put it in a vise, whatever you feel like doing. For the top of the steering column where you just bolt your steering wheel in, OEM, <clears throat> steering wheel nut, lock washer, and new OEM steering wheel collets. Definitely if you take this off, make sure you don't like rip this apart, lose the band spring. Uh, don't know how you'd find a new one. So my collet didn't have a lot of grease on it. Um, <clears throat> I get the feeling that this part probably doesn't need to be too greased, 
but I'm gonna go ahead and slap a little bit on there just to be safe. And again, this is one of those things you don't necessarily need to buy. Mine looked pretty fine. Uh, all the measurements I took came out pretty good. There's just a little bit of lip wear around here where you can see kind of the difference of, this is a lot flatter of a lip. This has been worn a little bit. I doubt that was what was making my steering wheel shake <clears throat> and give me the little death wobble in the steering wheel while I was driving at speed. That was probably the tie rods at only like four or five bucks. I'm just gonna replace it and keep the old one around if for some reason I ever need it again. So it should just pull the two pieces apart, make sure that the spring does not bounce away and get lost on you. There we go. I doubt this would ever wear out. If you still got one, it's almost certainly still good. Like, just looks like kind of a ring basically at this point and then you can separate it a little bit. Get a little bit of grease on your fingers. Hold on to the ring, take your new collet, work a little grease right into the groove there. We'll basically just be greasing the whole outside of this thing and it should work itself into the crease. Then I'm assuming you just kind of push this right over top, it should fall in. Um, you wanna make sure where the cutout is does not align with where these two pieces separate, obviously, just so the spring actually functions. I'm just gonna push it. So, that's ready to go. That should be able to just fit right on here. It'll spread out across the spring a little bit. Yep, all right. Nope, it's on, all right. That's it, then your steering wheel goes on, lock washer, nut. 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 All right, so we got everything mostly assembled other than the electronics on the steering column. Um, yeah, this thing's a mess. They do sell aftermarket. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do that uh, and then take it to a locksmith, feed it back to my original key. And got steering wheel here, which mine is in really nice condition. Actually, like surprisingly good. Uh, there's a little dust on it right now. The metal could use a little cleanup, but the wood is all perfect. Um, all this needs to go back on the steering column, but I've got to do a little rewiring to it to turn the headlights to uh, power switched instead of ground switched on the relays. Steering rack basically fully assembled. We've got everything ready to go on that. We're just going to grease it up. We got some Zerk fittings uh, so we can grease it up nice and good, just really loaded up with grease. And then we got the, you saw me install everything on the steering column, collet, everything except for this uh, mount isolator. That is a pain to get on. So if you decide to repaint your steering column like I did, go light on the paint, especially in this little area or else it'll be really hard to get back on. Uh, I ended up just using a little rubber mallet to beat it into place, it damaged the paint a bit, so I had to touch it up. But it is ready to go, essentially. We're just gonna get the shaft in there when the time comes and grease it up really good. So there's steering column done. And that's important because when I get this new uh, cross member and engine mounts for the VQ, we have to align the actual engine mounts, move the engine back and forth before picking the location. The steering shafts that go from the column to the rack can interfere with the front cover a little bit. So I wanna have these actually mounted up, ready to go so we can adjust the engine into the spot where it won't interfere and I won't have to grind stuff away or replace uh, U-joints and things like that. I know this seems like it was a weird thing to do, but since my dog broke my elbow and it just made sense to get this ready to go so we can make sure that I don't like install the engine and then can't actually turn my steering wheel. So we just got a box. Well, I did, not these guys. Um, I got my box from Apex Engineered here. Uh, they make a lot of awesome Z suspension parts, great prices. So shout out to uh, Ohm and the rest of the guys over at Apex Engineered. 
They hooked me up with a pre-order on their VQ subframe. All your nuts, bolts, hardware come nice and packaged like this. Zinc chromate covering, billet aluminum stuff, all beautiful looking like this is some good quality stuff right here for sure, for sure. And it's all labeled. Um, no stickers? No stickers. No stickers. No stickers. No stickers. Ooh, little Those top mounts for the uh, billet aluminum, top mounts for my steering rack. Nice. Looks like we've got the actual to the engine mount parts here. Nice. Right now, can't fit those up because the old engine mounts are on while the... That bolts to the engine. Yeah. And then so flat plate there, that bolts to the engine in place of the original stock mounts. Nice. Oh yeah, nice. I got hammered black powder coating, nice and resilient. A little bit of gloss to it. Is that one piece? No, it's two okay. pieces. All right, okay, so this is once the actual cross member that holds the engine, not the actual suspension subframe. So this is what goes there. Oh. So that's what holds the bolt, goes to the bushing. And that goes to the, the and subframe. And this goes to the actual uh, engine cross brace. Okay. This looks like the uh, 370Z, 350Z transmission cross member be done for the CD009 transmission. So see where I've got that piece of wood on the stock transmission mount ears there? Mm -hmm. You gotta cut those out. Those ears? Yep, those yeah. ears. And I think a little bit of the cross brace that goes to the transmission tunnel. Um, it shouldn't be, shouldn't reduce the structural integrity because this is gonna sit, bolt through the floor pans, uh, tie that all back together anyway, so. And this baby right here, That's this is stuff. what the engine sits on. This is gonna sit across the two put engine bay rails. Now I gotta figure out the orientation of whether this is forward or this is forward. Anyway, this is gonna sit somewhere right along there once we get my rails aligned. Um, and bolts to go right through. Um, I'm guessing there's probably a backing plate of some kind or we'll need to make one just to really get a good sandwich on the uh, this 18 gauge sheet metal that they made the rails out of. And then plenty of adjustment for getting that engine situated however we want. So the engine won't even, engine will stop here. Oh, dude, you got room for like a couple superchargers. Mm-hmm. Do six <laughs> superchargers, one yeah. per cylinder. And they can powder coat it in just basically any color you want. I just stuck with hammered black. This last piece is the whole front cross member that they make. They make one for all sorts of engine swaps. Generally, uh, you don't need you can get just like a universal one they make for if you're doing like an RB swap or a LS swap or for if you're just using your stock motor and you just want nicer uh, tubular front cross member. But with the VQ, the oil pan uh, hits in certain areas of these cross members. So they made one that actually moves things out of the way so you can mount it in here so this is a special one specifically for the vq swap and still keeps the steering rack all aligned the way it needs to be look at that adjustment right there mm -hmm. oh, was... you got five adjustment points for your control arms to adjust uh roll center bump steer everything um if you want to slam it low oh yeah oh yeah we're gonna make some progress in here Dude, this thing's gonna be driving in like this week. <laughs> For this bad boy to sit on it. Yeah, we're, we're hopefully gonna get this actually test fit in the car soon, so it's gonna be awesome. We'll just need to uh, do a little bit of adjustment here on things like, we'll definitely need to cut these flanges off the exhaust manifolds before we can fit it, because they'll hit the uh, trans tunnel mm. firewall. Mm -hmm. um, we'll probably I'll probably just do V-band clamps instead. A lot easier than trying to find and gut up and cut flanges off of used mid pipes. Open headers. <laughs> Check out for more cool stuff. <laughs> Stay classy, San Diego. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching and uh, like and subscribe. Peace.